let's say that the maximum depth is 0 0.6. Then you go to the points where the line depth is half of that, 0 0.3. And you say, how far apart in wavelength are those two points? And that's the full width of half maximum. Or half maximum. maximum is the full width of half max. Because there's no unique way to specify how broad a peak is when it's just fading away. It may never go to zero, for example. A Gaussian never goes to zero, so every Gaussian in that sense is infinitely broad. A Gaussian never goes to zero. <coughs> On the other hand, you can use the standard deviation of a Gaussian as a measure of its width. You could use the full width at half maximum of the Gaussian as a measure of its width. It just has to have something which is big when you have a big broad thing and narrow and small when you have a narrow thing or a sharply big thing. That's the idea. So there's multiple ways. There's no, no unique way to say what you mean by the width of the peak. So you have to be specific. The full width at maximum is the answer. So we'll get a start on talking about sources of line broadening. Things that make spectral lines not infinitely narrow. Because if you just take the simple Bohr model of the atom, or even the first blush with quantum mechanics, Schrodinger equation model of the atom, you predict what the energy levels are, and at first it seems like they should just be perfectly sharply well-defined values, so that it should take exactly a certain energy to cause the transition. And in that case, even the slightest variation from that wavelength would cause no absorption, and the, 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 the spectral line would essentially be a delta function. You'd have to be at exactly that wavelength to get absorption. But real spectral lines aren't like that, so we want to talk about the reasons why real spectral lines aren't delta functions. Essentially. It just spikes at a single wavelength. So number one is what we call natural broadening. And it's due to the finite lifetimes of excited states involved in atomic transitions. We've already mentioned this before when we talked about why the spectral lines of giant stars are narrower than the spectral lines of dwarf stars. Here we invoke the energy time uncertainty principle, which again we've mentioned before. The uncertainty in the energy is on the order of h bar divided by the lifetime. Delta E is the uncertainty in an orbital's energy due to its finite lifetime, delta T. So then that must mean that natural broadening is related to how long states live, essentially. 
how long does it take on average if I have an electron in n equals three? <clears throat> how long does it take on average before it drops into a lower energy level, either n equals one or n equals two? Here's a quick and dirty estimate. over lambda. So that says the delta E should be HC over lambda squared delta lambda, ignoring the minus sign of differentiating 1 over lambda. So derivative of 1 over lambda is minus 1 over lambda squared. So I'm just differentiating both sides. E is HC over lambda minus HC over lambda squared over lambda. And then I interpreted D delta E and E lambda is delta lambda, ignore the minus sign. So this would say that H bar over delta T is H C over lambda squared delta lambda. And so that would give us the estimate that delta lambda would be lambda squared over 2 pi C times 1 over delta T where delta T is the lifetime. As often happens, this is almost right. So a detailed calculation of the full width half max And we'll finish by saying what it is for the hydrogen alpha line, the 3 to 2 transition. Mm -hmm. And then we'll meet for next time talking about other sources of broadening. But what we're about to find out is that natural broadening doesn't broaden lines very much. Mm -hmm. It's usually other sources of broadening that are the main contributors. It's usually Doppler broadening and
the H alpha line, N equals 3 and N equals 2, in hydrogen. Lambda is 656.3 nanometers. Delta T is about 10 to the minus 8 seconds. So in other words, about 100 nanoseconds. Uh, it's actually 100 nanoseconds, 10 nanoseconds. Hydrogen doesn't stay very long before it drops to make the transition. And if you put those numbers in, what you get is 2.4 times 10 to the minus fifth power nanometers. Tiny, very, very narrow. 10 to the minus 5, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 5 nanometers Whoa. is the width of the line. That's crazy. It's like, wow, it's like it's maybe like 14 power. Yes, 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 very so, so <coughs> in terms of meters, of course, you have to know <coughs> what you want to compare it to is the wavelength of the line itself. Uh -huh. So, but it's still tiny. 2.4 times 10 to the minus 5 is tiny compared to 656.3. Right. So, so the natural wave, the natural width of visible spectral lines is generally quite small. Sounds good. It's definitely good to look it over, and I'm glad to hear that you're looking at the book because 